Now, um, we've been do doing everything in x, y, or x, y, and z so far, but, um, uh, but sometimes it's more convenient to work with polar coordinates, as you saw in Calc 3, and we're going to see that again today. Um, that uh, convert between x, y, and r theta, uh, distance from the origin, and the angle that the point makes with the uh, positive x-axis, and we have these relationships between the two. So we have a simpler conversion from polar to Cartesian, and then to go the other way, so here we have a distance from the origin, and uh, theta, well, the relationship with theta is not as simple. We have a tan theta is equal to y over x, and you need to be careful about how you compute theta if you're given x and y, because you might have to add pi to the result, etc. So given some sort of double integral for function f of x and y, how it converts to an integral in polar coordinates. Well, the um, idea of how, how to do a conversion, we're going to take a look at um, suppose your region D is what's called a polar rectangle. So this is not a rectangle literally in terms of x and y, but it is a rectangle in terms of r and theta um, in that um, you're restricting r to a Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Time out. Back into the hall it goes. Oh. It joins the chair, but I can still it's still there. Okay. Where did I talk about that? Um, so restrict R to a range of values from A to B, and we're going to restrict the angle theta also to a range of values. So <clears throat> when you're restricting a bit. When you're restricting R to a range of values, you're looking at the area between two concentric circles. Here's R equals A, R equals B. Uh, but then we're going to restrict even further, we're going to restrict the angle to a certain interval. So here's theta equals alpha beta equals beta. So this region, right here that I'm shading, that's an example of a polar rectangle. I would get where you have constant boundaries for your variables r and theta. Whereas when you restrict x and y in the same way, what you get is an actual rectangle. Okay, so how would you integrate over a region like this, keeping everything in the uh, polar coordinates. So let's call this region D. Oh, I guess I already did. Our um, theta <coughs> over D, or really, um, you compute the volume. What we really want to do is compute the volume of a solid. the base is given by D, and the height is given by this function, f of r theta. Right, so that's really what we want to do. It's not just a matter of integrating f over, over D. That would be no problem. But we really want to compute the volume of a solid determined by f of theta and D. So, so quickly, the circle is like a sphere, right? Um, sphere. Actually, what we're seeing here is still two dimensions. Yeah. So if F of theta is coming out from the board, um, that be three dimensions. Um, yes, for for solid. But the point is, we're integrating over a two dimensional region. Um, I'll, I'll, I guess wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'll draw a situation here. 
All right, so here is our polar rectangle. So here's D. And the height at every point, we have any point R theta in D, then the height of the solid at that point is given by this distance f of r theta. So we want to compute the volume of this solid. This should be a straight line. Of this solid by integrating um, f of r theta over this region d. But because what we have here is not a real rectangle but a polar rectangle, we have to be careful about how we do it. So the so we look if we take a closer look at our polar rectangle, what we can do is we can divide it into several smaller polar rectangles. So in this case, um, I have I've divided this interval, this is from A to B in R. I divide it into, in this case, five subintervals of uh, width delta R. So, um, so we let delta R be B minus A over N, where N is any number of subintervals, in this case N equals five. And we do a similar subdivision in, uh, in, in theta. So here we have, even though all of these widths are different, the angle is the same. So delta theta is beta minus alpha over m. So we're dividing the interval from a to b for r in, uh, to n subintervals. We're dividing the interval in theta from alpha to beta into m subintervals where n and m are not necessarily the same. Okay. Now, so the volume of a solid is going to be roughly the sum of the volumes of, for lack of a better word, I'll call subsolids. With the base being a polar rectangle of dimensions delta R and uh, delta R and delta theta. Okay. And the height is given by the function f of R theta that, de that defines z. Now, we're going to get the areas of these polar rectangles, because that's what we need. We need the area of this polar rectangle, and then we'll just multiply it by the height. So, let me zoom in on this little feather just so I can A, R, N is equal to B, and I'm dividing this. So we have R1, R2, R3, R4. So we have, and the spacing between each of these is delta R. So here we have several radii between A and B, and each one is equal to A plus I times delta R. Now, so now if this is one of these polar rectangles, where again the angle that it's sweeping through is uh, delta theta, then to get the area of this, what formulas, like from your trig class, do we need to use? We're, 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 we're between, so something like this. A circle sector. Yeah, so the area of a circular sector is what you use. Really what you're going to be doing is taking the difference of the areas of two circular sectors. So to get this area right here, what you'll do is you'll compute the area of this entire circular sector. So you use this formula, A is 1 half R squared theta which comes from the area, formula for the area of a circle, because if theta was 2 pi for the whole circle, you get the familiar pi r squared. 